Hey, it's Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and it's another week in review. And and before I get into this one, the the news, the what I played, the what the last week looked like, and a little bit of a tease as to what's coming up next week, I had someone post that they felt that with all the additions to this uh, weekly segment, that perhaps it was getting a little messy, and maybe it should be split up into two segments. And so, as usual, this is where I sit there and look for feedback in terms of the general opinions. And, and the problem with feedback, I, I always forget to say this beforehand, the problem with feedback inherently is that if or when I get someone saying, I prefer it this way, I'm almost certainly going to be ignoring at least one person just because of the nature of two contrary pieces of feedback. My goal, as always, is to try to figure out the best general way forward based on the overall amount of feedback and understanding that it won't be the perfect answer for everyone. But the, the feedback part is, do I split this up? Do I split this up into different regular weekly segments? Uh, there's a few things we do every week consistently or mostly consistently. We have the Kickstarter Roundup on Monday, which is a consistent segment. Uh, we have reviews on Saturday, which is sort of a consistent segment. Different games, obviously, but reviews are generally on Saturday, unless it's a more notable game, which case sometimes I'll sprinkle it out throughout the week. Or in the case of this past week, I've been completely overloaded, and so it's been a whole different conversation. But all, all these are, are conversations. But the main segments here are going to be news, what I played, and the past week, how, what was in the past week, what videos went up, and all of that. And so I want to know from your stance, from your feedback, do you think I should be splitting it up into different segments, and if so, how do you think that should be distributed? So that's that's basically the question. And part of the problem here is, if I do so, when do those go up in the videos? Do they both go up on Saturday as two different videos? Do they go up throughout the week? And also, what do I do in terms of short news weeks? News is not always a big segment. It's, it's very often, like last week was a big week. There was a lot of stuff to talk about. This week, there's a few things. But even then, it's not a ton to really go into. And the degree in which I will go into the news is often not a lot. So, yeah, feedback always welcome, desired. The, the general guidance and growth of the channel, is, as I've always said, is a two-way street. It's a conversation as to how I can make it better, practically speaking. And speaking of news, so to begin with, I'll talk about Bloodstone very briefly, because I, I'm probably doing a full video on Bloodstone. So I guess the conversation piece here is Bloodstone obviously canceled, and I had a few people say, well, why didn't you cover it last week? Because I film these usually Thursday, and so I usually don't have the whatever happens Friday. In fact, today, speaking of which, if something drastically horrible or amazing or gigantic happened your yesterday on Friday, it won't be in this video because I'm filming this on Thursday. So that's a regular thing. And some, sometimes if I'm running late, I film it Friday, but I try not to let things get too close to the cuff because then I have to sit there and manage uploading thumbnails, timing, getting all the ads out of the way or minimizing the amount of ads or all, all the processes and steps in a video. I, I, I want to actually have time to do them properly. So yeah, that's going to be that answer there. But going back to Bloodstone, Bloodstone canceled. Uh, lots of people who are supportive of the decision, the usual people who will be upset as far as how can they cancel after they hit their funding goal. It is a, I've done a full video on this segment, but I, I'm going to do another one. And that's for two reasons. First of all, there's always more to say. There is going to be stuff to say that is specific or relevant to Bloodstone. And also because YouTube and the internets are fleeting. And so revisiting past topics is something I'm regularly going to do as long as there's something new to bring to the table. I'm not going to simply repeat a topic for the sake of repeating a topic. But if there's a new spin, new insight, new ways I can present myself, new context, all those things, I'll constantly revisit a topic. So I'm probably going to be doing a full segment, a full video this coming week on what happened with Bloodstone. Not for sure, but probably. And speaking of which, if there's any aspects you want me to touch upon, let me know in the comments down below because I'll do so. Whatever that aspect will be. How could they have cancelled if this, this, and this? Why are funding goals set so arbitrarily low if it's not really the funding goal? Uh, what happened with Bloodstone? What was the drama on Bloodstone? Anything you want to know, or you were unhappy with this, uh, anything you want to see covered in a segment about Bloodstone, Put in the comments down below, because I will do my best to cover whatever people ask about. Uh, as far as this week's news, we have a few things, and I think this was actually from the prior week, but I didn't talk about last week. Uh, Stardew Valley is a board game. They came out with a board game, apparently, so I don't know Stardew Valley at all. It's a video game, but I've never played it. And they came out with a board game, and they dropped it, and they sold 20,000 units in, you know, two days, basically, because people went crazy over getting a board game for Stardew Valley. Uh, from reading the rules, not myself, but from someone else who read the rules, I believe it's 
coming across on the lighter side, but not necessarily too light. So it's going to be, you know, gateway plus ish, just from a reading of the rules and some a fellow reviewer's opinion of the game. Past that, we'll, we'll see. I mean, copies have started to land already, so we'll see how that plays out and what goes on. And this is continuing the cycle of just video games being turned into board games again and again and again. It's happening on a f more frequent basis every single week. And speaking of which, Prison Architect is being turned into a board game by David Tercy. So it's, it's going to be a board game, I think by P. PSC games. I'm not certain. I have to check that one up. But uh, yeah, Prison Architect, if you're not familiar, is a Steam game of managing a prison, and that's going to be a board game now. So so more video games being turned into board games. And then speaking of other IPs turned into board games, our Gargoyles is going to be the next game in the whole you know line of Horrified and. Uh, Wonder Woman and all those games that's being turned into a board game. So if you're familiar or a fan of the old Disney Gargoyles, that will now be, I think it's Disney, I'm pretty sure it's, it's Disney, right? I, I got no clue, but I'm pretty sure it's Disney. I'm not a fan of Gargoyles, if it wasn't clear, but not not a fan, just never watched it. And so that's going to be turn, coming to a board game as well. And that's, that's going to be the news, mostly quick and sweet. As far as what I played, so going through what I played this past week, and there's also going to be a change in how I talk about this as well, in the sense that I had someone, and again, feedback, welcome, I had someone mention to me, I think it was in a Patreon message, I think, I'm not certain, I have to double check, Patreon has the worst messaging tracking, so I have to actually figure out where it was, it might have been Discord, I'm not sure, but they said that they would like to see my opinion as I talk about a game, even when I, uh, if I've talked, about, if I'm talking about a game that I've played and I'm going to be doing a review, they, they'd like to see my opinion. They, they're still probably going to watch my videos, which is not. I don't hold it back because I feel the need to get people to watch my videos. I hold it back for two reasons. One of which I'm still holding back. That's non-negotiable. When I am talking about saying, "Hey, I played this and this, but no opinions coming," or even just saying, "I'm not even talking about the game because I haven't, I need to get more time," or whatever it is. Sometimes it's going to be because I haven't fully formed an opinion, and if I'm not prepared to to deliver the opinion at the present point, I won't. So, for example, sometimes I will play a game that I, like, that I'm just not sure, that I think it needs more plays for me to develop my opinion. And in that case, I'm not going to say anything, because it can be helpful or hurtful in the wrong way. I might say that I like it, and then realize it has no replay value, and now I'm on camera saying I like the game, and then people are going to inevitably say, but you like that game. And I'm like, no, 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 I did the review a week later, and I said it has no replay value. So, so that's one problem. And the other problem is the reverse. I might say I don't like it, and multiple plays might really change my mind of it. So that can happen. So if I'm, if I'm uncertain, then I won't say anything. Uh, the second is because I, I think it's just more fun to have the surprise, but it's not meant to be baiting you into a video, so I'm probably going to be trying to be a little bit more free with my opinion uh, as far as things that are coming up in reviews, sometimes. So, oh, this is going to be fun. I'm realizing now what I'm going to be talking about in a minute, and some of them are going to have opinions attached, so we'll go through it. Either way, so what do we have played here? So first of all, Wild Ascent. been playing a lot of Wild Ascent because I am doing a review of that, or more specifically, I just filmed the review yesterday. It's going to be going up next week, and my review of Wild Ascent is overwhelmingly positive. Overwhelmingly positive. I mean, I start off the review with a whole bunch of negatives. There are negatives, to be clear, but it is an overwhelming positive review. I am loving Wild Ascent, absolutely enjoying the experience. It's Kingdom Death Light, supposedly, according to Jeremy Howard. I've never played Kingdom Death Light. I've never played Kingdom Death, so I can't talk about the comparisons there, but the experience it's giving me is there's enough depth that I'm really enjoying the experience, but not so much depth as to be overwhelming. It's a 10 campaign series, and if it were a 20 campaign series, I would debate getting rid of it genuinely, because as much as I like it, I just don't have room for epic long campaign games because I'll play it once and move on from them. And and maybe I'd maybe I would do that. Maybe if it was a twenty game 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 campaign, I'd probably play it once and then get rid of it. Ten games is reasonable, it's achievable. It's a uh, fifteen to twenty hours of gameplay, which is something I can knock out, you know, twice a year and, and keep, feel justified owning it and keeping it in my collection. But absolutely loving Wild Descent, so anyone been who's been waiting on that, you know, it's not to say it's a good game for you but add my opinion to the list of people who have enjoyed it, which is a small list because not a lot of people have played it. Then we have Rising Sun. I managed to break out Rising Sun and get a few plays in over the weekend. I had a friend come in and uh, we I got a few plays of Rising Sun in over the weekend that I've been I haven't played Rising Sun in like three years. I gave it like three or four plays when I first got it, and we got in two more plays over the weekend. And I will have a review going up. It is leaving my collection, so sorry about that. We'll go more into the review, but it's one hundred percent leaving my collection, which is a shame. I've been holding on to it for a long time, but it's it's just. Mm. 
review time. Just save that for the review. Uh, Cockroach Royal, continue to pull that one out. That's a consistent end of game night filler. Continue to get multiple plays of Cockroach Royal in. Played a little bit of Cloaked Cast with my daughter again. That's the one we reviewed already, but still hit the table. Orconomics, got in three games of Orconomics this week. Uh, you did two before the review, and then one on a playthrough review, which is actually going up later today. So Orconomics is a game that Orconomics Second Edition, currently on Kickstarter. Overall, short note is I enjoy it, but I... Did I talk about... Oh, we didn't get to the wheel last week. Uh, what's it called? Orconomic short version is I enjoy it, but I'm also not uncertain of how many, how, what it has in terms of legs. Is it going to hold up long term? And that's more of a ver variability question, so we'll see. Uh, Carson City. Oh my gosh, Carson City is such a good game. It's been a while since I broke that one out, but we got Carson City to the table this weekend. Still amazing. It's still an amazing, incredible experience. It's it's one of those games that whenever you play some games, you you realize that you're keeping other games that are inferior, and you should get rid of other games, and you should purge your collection even harder and firmer than you have been until now. So Carson City and Wild Ascent, for that matter, are making me really look at what games are staying and leaving and why. Then there's more Wild Ascent, more Wild Ascent. Bantam West. Bantam West is a game that I... That one I'm going to hold off on, but I would say I'll say overall I like it. Still going to hold off on that one, but I got a second game on TTS in. They are still modifying rules and tweaking based on feedback we Jesse and I gave from our first session, Quackle of an Eye. And so I have the prototype, still need to review it, but I've been waiting for like the update pack from some things they changed. So that's going to be Bantam West. Then we have Super Fantasy Brawl. I played, I did a playthrough and review with Rena on the channel, which is, uh, went up. Uh, went up on Thursday. And then we have Everdell, which also was a playthrough and review of the new content in Everdell. That also went up Thursday and, uh, sorry, that went up Wednesday. And then if things went well, you'll, I'll also be adding to what I played this week, uh, Magna Roma, which is set up on the table. So hopefully I am playing that this evening. Hopefully I'm playing that, you know, well, a few hours from, from now, basically. So we'll see how that all goes. And I'll, I guess I'll talk about it next week. Either, either way, that is going to be everything that I played last week, or most of the things I played last week, as far as the week in review. So what happened last week, what went up, all that stuff. So on Saturday, dropped five videos. We had the week in review, we had Fairy Stories, that's pretty clever gameplay, V Commandos, and Ragnarok's gameplay and review. And Fairy Stories is a game I played with my daughter. It's okay, I wouldn't turn it down, but also not a game that I particularly enjoyed. Ricky likes it a lot, but that's it's a, it's a trick-taking game, effectively, for families and kids. Solid game, just not one that I particularly enjoy. That's Pretty Clever was not really a review. I should have thrown in a review at the end. That was our first gameplay, the first use of the new gear, the equipment that I have set up over here that's been abusing more and more in all my videos. The couch is still a problem I have to figure out. I want the couch to stay. It's been a fixture of the channel for so long. But I also don't want to move equipment back and forth every single time I film, nor do I want the the drastic gap in quality when I go from this setup to that setup. So I need to figure out a way. It might involve buying another set of lights and mic or something like that. The camera, the camera's the most expensive part, so I can't buy another camera just for that. I'll move the camera rather than spending another, you know, $3,500 on a camera setup. But getting another set of lights and, and stuff may be, might be the way to go. We'll figure that out. Either way. That's a side point to the fact that Ganshan Clever, the gameplay we had, is a game that I like, we enjoyed, and we got a gameplay of that up. Then there's V Commandos. V Commandos is a solid game. Kickstarter coming soon. Love V Commandos. Uh, I complained... It's, it's so I, I, my biggest complaint in V Commandos is the stealth mechanic does not feel as smooth, streamlined, call it what you will. I'm not sure what word I'm looking for, but it doesn't feel as ideal as what I'd like out of a out of a stealth mechanic. And I had someone ask, what would you do for a stealth mechanic if not that? And that's an excellent question. Because perfect information is its own conversation. Can you put in a stealth mechanic in a game that is perfect information based? It feels right and wrong at the same time. On the one hand, it gives you the control you're looking for. On the other hand, is perfect information really the mechanic you want to go for? And so I answered that I'd want more mitigation to a degree, some degree of, you know, if I'm doing X, if I'm doing Y, different degrees of dice rolls. I'm not entirely sure. It's a very good question. It's easy to critique a game. It's harder to fix a problem. And so V Commandos, again, great game. Love the game. It's in my collection, solid game. I think I gave it a four to five. I'm pretty sure I gave it a four to five. But it is one that is a solid game with a few nitpicks that I have along the way. And then finally, Ragnarok. Ragnarok is a thoroughly enjoyable abstract game currently on Kickstarter. Uh, in terms of backing it or not, check my, my Should You Back It video that I did on Monday, but overall, I think it's, you know, in that medium good value place, I think over time the value will definitely diminish, but initially it's a good game from a noted designer, and, and I think initially it'll hold its value, because it's it's fun, it's a lot of fun. Then that brings us to 
to Sunday. Sunday was one of my favorite videos I've ever done on the channel, which, and this is consistently true. When I do some of these top 10 lists with Mina, they end up being a lot of fun. But 10 games I won't play with Alex was Sunday's video. That was a video in which Mina went through my, my shelves or our shelves and picked out 10 games that she genuinely does not want to play again. And it was hard. It was, it was genuinely hard. It was, I mean, it's a little tricky in terms of how you count it. Assuming you tried to avoid overlaps, like, you know, counting the resistance and White Knight Ultimate Werewolf, it really was hard to find 10, because they're, overall, if a game, if Rina doesn't enjoy a game, then it has to be played by someone else. So, it's one of those things where there's really not a lot of games in our collection that, that Rina enjoys, that Rina does not want to play with me, that I like. And so, it was hard to get the list together, but it was one of the most fun videos I've ever done. Lots of back and forth and banter, and I, I enjoy them. I, I enjoy those videos with Rina. So, check that one out. If you haven't watched it, it's I, I think it's enjoyable. I'm biased, but either way. Uh, Monday was Kickstarter Roundup. Lots of Kickstarters hitting again. It's going to continue. Next week, we have more. And the week after, we have more. Lots of names hitting Kickstarter again and again. No reprieve reprieve happening whatsoever, at least not for the uh, foreseeable future. At some point there'll be a reprieve and then we'll complain about how Kickstarter's light and empty for a week and a half and oh no, we'll save money. But other than that, more Kickstarters on Monday. Tuesday, let me take a drink here. Tuesday was Tiny Epic Dungeon Should You Back It, full video devoted to that, and I debated not doing the video because, again, Tiny Epic Dungeons is a game that doesn't actually have a lot of nuance, but I had enough people, probably just due to the size, I mean, 20,000 plus backers, I had enough people asking for a video on Tiny Epic Dungeons, that I was like, fine, I'll do a full, full video on it, the short, very short nuance of it is you do get exclusive extras, but you also pay probably more than they're worth, and you could probably get them on the secondhand market for cheaper if you're a patient. Is it a bad back? No. If you're a fan of Tiny Epic Dungeons, you're paying a few bucks more and you're getting a game that you'll... If you're, if you're a fan of Tiny Epic Series, you're paying a few bucks more and you're getting a game you'll probably like. Is it a particularly good back? No, but that's not a surprise. Smaller games in general have a harder time being a good value. There's just... That shipping's gonna kill the gap. It's the same reason Board Game Co. same reason that our company uh, does not do small trades or We'll, won't be able to offer you a lot of money for a small purchase. Small form factors means the shipping ends up just killing the value, and so that's just a hard conversation there. On Wednesday, Wednesday was going to be the Everdell playthrough with Rina, and so this was this is the new content from Everdell, which is fun because it's the new content from Everdell. Uh, this is the first time that I played with an Everdell expansion, and also yes, I got three rules gaffs in the in the playthrough. We this is Everdell, so we had four force locations in a two-player game. You should only have three. This is our first two-player game, so that happened. Then we had. Uh, we drew cards above our hand limit as opposed to, two, you don't, you're not supposed to draw cards, we, we drew above our hand limit and discarded as opposed to you're not supposed to draw above your hand limit, and that's something I kind of realized halfway through the game, I was like, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to do that, but then I just didn't want to like check the rules and grab them from wherever and figure it out, so I was like, I'll go through with it, ultimately to me, a playthrough is always, almost always going to have mistakes, I'll do what I can to mitigate them, I'll post links when I mess them up, I'll post a pinned comment or whatever, but uh, mistakes are likely going to be a thing that will happen, and then the third one, the third one was, oh, Legendary Creatures. We, I had never played Legendary Creatures, and so I just had them in my deck from the new cards, and then they just showed up, and so we didn't really realize how to play with them. We mostly inferred how to play with them correctly, but we missed the fact that you're supposed to get Legendary Creatures at the beginning of the setup as opposed to, you know, in the regular deck of cards, so that was a thing. But other than that, really enjoyed it. I liked Everdell with the new content. I can't speak for how this compares to any other expansion because I haven't played the other expansions. I, I want to even more now, but it really opened up the game of Everdell for me. If you're coming at Avidel as someone who's only played base, I can tell you this really opens up the game. If you play the other expansions, I can't give you a comparison point, and, and that's basically it. You can watch the whole thing. We have a playthrough and then final thoughts, always timestamped uh, towards the end, and final thoughts review, whatever you want to call it. Then Thursday. Thursday was Super Fantasy Brawl. Same deal here. It was old content combined with new content. Both Mythic as well as Starling Games sent us... Um, sent us you know, partial kits of their stuff. It wasn't like a full prototype. Mythic sent us three heroes and then like seven hero decks, and Everdell sent us just a bunch of cards, but no full-fledged expansion. And so Mythic, we went through Super Fantasy Ball, we went through another gameplay of it. Short version is Rena destroyed me again. And by the way, I, I'm pretty sure I've only won one game of Super Fantasy Ball against Rena so far. So that trend is firmly entrenched in the fact that she manages to win me every single time, or nearly every single time. But that was Thursday. And then Friday, Friday was games leaving the collection, which I, I kept pushing off. It's actually supposed to be earlier this week, but I kept pushing it off, trying to balance the order of how the week played out. So Friday has games leaving the collection. It's it's getting to be a little bit more brutal and cutthroat around here. I have uh, four, three or four reviews lined up that I need to do at some point over the next month of 
games that are leaving the collection and once I do the reviews they'll be in next month's video so I already have like four or five month games lined up for what's leaving the collection in in March that's the month yeah so and then there's gonna be more it's getting as the more I get good games the more I look at games that I'm not playing and say that they're not worth the shelf space and mental energy they are taking up and then Friday finally Saturday Saturday we have the weekend review today which is right now and then at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time we have an economic second edition playthrough and review with myself Rina and Shira so again timestamps if you just want the review part short version I already gave away we like it we are worried about the long-term longevity at 2 o'clock p.m. I have a so you've been eaten review I will um so then I'll give the general thoughts in terms of you know whatever I am really happy that a lot of people are loving that game genuinely if you look at the content around it, it people seem to really love the game I thought it was okay. I, I wasn't blown away by it. I thought it was okay. I, the, the solo mode, one of the solo modes was my favorite part. They have they have four versions. They have a zero versus zero player game. They have two different solo games, and then they have the two player experience. My problem is I, both in the two player experience and the solo mode, I didn't love the, the monster. Playing as the monster didn't feel like it gave me the degree of choice of agency that I want in the game. It was, it was strong. It was balanced, but it just... I didn't want I didn't have the agency that I wanted as that as that character. So I really primarily enjoy the minor solo game. That's my favorite way to play uh, so you've been eaten. I think it's staying in my collection for now. And I go through some of the review. I'm pretty sure it's staying in my collection for now. I'm uncertain long term how it plays out because it's competing in a solo space as opposed to a two player space, and I play more two player games than I do solo. So just on playtime and weighing it up against other games like Under Falling Skies would be a the most accurate comparison I have. I don't know how So You've Been fares long term. Good game, but again, I liked primarily the solo mode, but lots of people are liking all the modes, so check out other content as well. Uh, then we have the Night Market going up at 4 Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, 12 to 4. 4 Eastern Standard Time, the Night Market's going up. Short version there is I like it. Again, long-term longevity, don't really know. This is the the balance of I really enjoy the game in its uh, the way. I really enjoy the game currently, but I'm not pulled in by the graphic design, and some parts feel a little more fiddly. So overall, really solid game, happy to have it in my collection, and looking forward to getting another play of it, or another multiple plays of it, but long-term longevity, I don't know. It's going to take time to figure that one out. Whenever a game is a 3, I rated it a 3 out of 5. Whenever a game is a 3, it's always a question. I have 3s that have been a been in my collection for for a long time. Seven Wonders is a three for me. Nothing. That's not amazing. I like Seven Wonders. It's a good solid three, and it stayed in my collection since 2012. But many other threes leave my collection after six months. So it's always a balance there. But Night Market for right now, entering my collection, solid game. That's from Talent Strike Studios. And then finally, at potentially six, I don't know yet. Potentially six, I may have a review from Ricky. I don't know what it is. We are hoping to film a review today. We haven't gotten to it all week. Uh, just she's we, she's been busy and I'm busy. We haven't been able to overlap in terms of yes, I know she's a nine year old, but she also has uh, busyness like homework and schools, and she gets a once a week trip out with her mother. But uh, either way, point is we haven't filmed it yet. But if we get a chance to film it today, there will be a review from Ricky going up at six. And then as far as next week, next week I already mentioned I have a Wild Ascent review coming. I may have a Bloodstone deep dive in terms of general it's going to be bloodstone driven in terms of the conversation but again it's really just about canceled kickstarters and how we handle and address and look at kickstarters and all that and then lastly is going to be uh zombicide undead or alive i should have a full dedicated zombicide undead or alive recap video so if you if you're sick of zombicide or me talking about zombicide you can skip that if you want to hear more about cool add-on steampunk and horses heroes on horses zombies zombies survivors on horses then check out that so we'll go into that that's basically everything. That's your Week in Review. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you have an amazing week, amazing day, all that stuff. And I will see you next week with a slew of other content as well as, you know, all the stuff. I should really do a live Q&A at some point. Not this Sunday, I guess. It's too late now. But I should do a live Q&A. It's been like a five weeks since the last one. Maybe, maybe, maybe the Sunday after. Ooh, ooh, maybe. We'll see. Either way, keep your eyes peeled. Until next time, have a good one.